Well, good evening. I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction for our Hebrew school students just to explain a couple things about what we're doing. Who's noticed this room before? Everybody's noticed this room before. What have you noticed about this room? What, what have you noticed, Moira, about this room? That there are what? That there are words at the top. Mm -hmm. What do they say? And there was no one to speak up for me. That comes from a piece that was written actually from by a uh, minister who wrote about when he saw neighbors suffering and different groups who were victims of prejudice and discrimination. Oh, I don't have to worry about it. I'm not one of them. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not one of them. I don't have to say anything. I don't have to speak up because I'm not one of them. And eventually he was imagining that one day it could happen that people could be prejudiced and discriminate against him, but because he didn't stand up for anybody else, there would be nobody to speak up for him. When we think about nobody speaking up for us, the reason that this is on there is because this is a special memorial room. Did you notice it's filled with pictures? Yeah, yeah it's filled with pictures and the pictures, what was that? Some of, many of them are people who died, but they're actually not all people who died in the Shoah or in the Holocaust, which is what it is. It's a Holocaust memorial. So we'll talk about what that means. I think probably most of them are no longer living, even the survivors, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're pictures of relatives and family members and some of our temple members. And there's pictures that are taken mostly in the 1920s and the 1930s, so 100 years ago or 90 years ago or more. And some of them are at family gatherings. Some of them are at the beach, if you go and look, and some of them are at dinners, and some of them are at weddings and seders and all kinds of different events. And the pictures have something in common. They all have in common that they're pictures of Jewish people who were living in Europe. And the people in these pictures, they lived during a terrible time in Europe during World War II and during a time that in Jewish history, we call it the Shoah or the Shoah, or sometimes you hear it called the Holocaust. And the word Holocaust means destruction, something that is totally destroyed. And tonight, when the sun goes down, starts the Memorial Day called Yom HaShoah. It lasts all day tomorrow. And Yom HaShoah means Memorial Day for the Holocaust against Jewish people. When we talk about the Shoah, or we talk about the Holocaust, we're talking about the destruction of a whole way of life because 6 million Jewish people were killed during the Shoah. It was from 1939 to 1945. And even though that seems like a really long time ago, we remember, and it's important for us to remember all of those people. Now, you know that when a family member dies, a whole family is changed. So when 6 million Jewish people died in a really kind of a short amount of time, just in six years, it changed the whole big family of the Jewish people. And some of the pictures, pictures of people that we have in this memorial room. They died during the Shoah, as, as Maverick said, and some of the people pictured survived, and some of them even moved to Oklahoma, and some of them even had families move to Oklahoma, and tonight we have two people with us for our service who are going to help us in the service, and they had family members who survived the Holocaust, and also family members who were killed during the Holocaust. So after our service, if you want to ask questions of Anita Barlow or Mike Cornblit, they can tell you about their families. So these are pictures from before the show off. And the people didn't know in these pictures, they didn't know that there was going to be such a terrible time in Europe. They mostly knew that there was really bad discrimination against the Jewish people from some of the people in government, maybe from some of their neighbors, but they figured that it was going to be okay. Some of their friends who were not Jewish knew that there were other people who were prejudiced against the Jewish people, but they liked their friends and they thought it's going to be okay. The people with a lot of prejudice and a lot of discrimination ended up coming into power and being in the government. They were part of a political party that was called the Nazis. You heard of the Nazis? Who's heard of the Nazis? Some people have and some people have not. Some have and some have not. 
Well, when the Nazis took over power in Germany, then because they were in the government, they had an army and they had control of the police and they spread their bad feelings against Jewish people, even though the Jewish people didn't do anything. Eventually it meant that if you were Jewish, you were in danger because of the Nazis and because the government was officially against Jewish people. So there were a lot of regular people who were just living their lives and they didn't question the discrimination because it was coming from the government and they thought, well, it's probably, I don't know, right or okay. So today, as Yom HaShoah starts, we remember that discrimination and prejudice hurts people. And today we remember that all the people in these pictures and all their family members and all the 6 million people who were killed and who died and the people, oops, and the people whose lives were changed forever when they survived, all the Jewish people in the Shoah, they were precious. Each individual person, just like each of you is precious. And they were normal. They had favorite flavors of ice cream. And sometimes they yelled at their brother. And sometimes they want to swim meat. And sometimes they got a C or a D in school. And they were just like us because they were just Jewish people living their lives. But also they were not like us because they lived during such a terrible time in Europe. When we remember them, we remember how important it is to be kind to all people, for the people who weren't kind to them, and to stand up when others are being bullied, for their friends who saw what was happening and they didn't say anything, right? Just like it says above the room. And we also remember to speak to trusted adults if we ever feel like we're being threatened because we are different. We live in a country that says that Jewish people and people of all religions and backgrounds should be safe and respected. So our service is gonna begin on page 522. Remember in those brackets, the blue page numbers, and we're gonna light six Yisker candles. Yisker means memorial, and these candles are gonna burn for all of Yom HaShoah as memorial candles for those who died. And Anita Barlow and Mike Kornblit are gonna do that for us. We kindled these lights in memory, memory of, of six, the six, six million, million Jews murdered by, by the Nazis, Nazis and their collaborators. May the memory of the righteous be a blessing. Zikrahon Livraha. So each one of these six candles represents a million people so that we have the light for six million. Sometimes you might see that at home, somebody lights a Yisker candle, a memorial candle on the anniversary of a loved one's death because the light of the candle is like the light of the soul of our loved one. Did you have a question? Yeah, lighting memorial candles for loved ones who have died. And so we light these for all of the people who have died. a little garden fragment and full of rose the push is narrow and the little boy walks along it a little boy a sweet boy like the growing blossom when the blossom comes to bloom the little boy will be no more. 
when we see terrible things or when we're afraid and we're not sure why things are happening around us, sometimes we wonder, where's God? Or we think maybe God could be doing more to help us. And some of the Jewish people in Europe during the Shoah went into hiding so that they could survive the, what the Nazis were trying to do to hurt them. So in Germany, someone wrote this poem on a wall where they were hiding. I believe in the sun, even when it is not shining. I believe in love, even when feeling is not. I believe in God, even when God is silent. And there's a special memorial prayer that we say whenever we have a funeral or doing a memorial service for a Jewish person who's died. It's called El Malay Rachamim, and it means God full of compassion. You'll find it on page 530 in those brackets. And on Yom HaShoah, we say a special El Malay mm. Rachamim. It's not just for one person, but it's for all the 6 million people who died. If you'd like to read the English with me on page 530 in the brackets, look at those little blue page numbers and go Hebrew style. Can you find it, Maverick? Yeah. 530, right there. Right here. And it says in the big blue letters, fully compassionate. So if you'd like to read it with me, you're invited to read the English with me. And then Zemer will sing, the, will chant the Hebrew. Fully compassionate to God on high, to our six million brothers and sisters murdered because they were Jews, grant clear and certain rest with you in the lofty heights of the sacred and pure, whose brightness shines like the very glow of heaven. Source of mercy, forever enfold them in the embrace of your wings. Secure their souls in eternity. Adonai, they are yours. They will rest in peace. Amen. page on page 533 in the brackets, we also have a special mourner's cottage for Yom HaShoah. Elie Wiesel was a very famous author and speaker who taught about the Holocaust and ethics and the importance of being kind and respectful to all people, and that respecting others also means speaking up and helping them when they're hurting or in danger or being discriminated against. So in between the words of this special mourner Scottish, there are the names of different places where Jewish people were forced to go and live, and for many of them, to die during the Shoah. Jewish people did not get to choose where to live or work once the Nazis took over. We cannot say the names of all the six million people who died, but we can remember that they were real people in real places. When we say the Kaddish to show God, and also to show each other that we remember and that we'll do everything we can to fight against discrimination and prejudice. So we're going to continue with this special Mourner's Kaddish and for the Mourner's Kaddish, I'd like to ask you to please stand. It's on page 533. And for this time, Anita Barlow and I are going to recite this Kaddish because it's a little bit different, but if you get the rhythm of it and you wanna join, you certainly can. 
Yit Kadal, Auschwitz, Yit Kadash, Lutz, Shme Raba, Onar, the Alma Divra Hirute, Babi Yar, the Amlich Malachute, Medanek, the Chayachon of Yomechon, Beer Canal, the Chaye the whole Beit Israel, Kovno, the Agalau Vizman Kariv, Janoska, the Imru Amen. Yehesh me Raba Mivarach Leolam or Le Almaya, Yit Barach Vishabach, Theresenstad, Vit Paar Vit Romam, Buchenwald, Vit Nase Vit Hadar, Vablinka, Vit Ale Vit Alal, Vilna, Shme de Kudasha Brihu, Bergen Dawson, Le Ela. Okay, now it happens. Mauthausen. Minsk. Damiran Alma. Warsaw. Vimru Amen. Yehesh Lama Raba Min Shemaya, the Chaim Aleinu, Baal Kol Yisrael, Vimru Amen. Ose Shalom Vimroma. Uya say shalom aleinu, veil full Yisrael, vimru amen. So to close tonight, we're going to sing a song on page 531 about believing in God even when things are hard, even when they are confusing, painful, or frightening. And after we sing, before you go home tonight, you're invited to look at the pictures in the memorial. And if you have any questions that you want to ask any of us one-on-one, -on -one, you can come and ask us questions. Page 531. <laughs> perfect faith in the Messiah's coming. Despite it all, I still believe. If you'd like to put your prayer books back on the cart, our service is concluded. Something about it feels kind of right. Okay, can I ask everybody, I'm going to ask everybody, I'm going to tell you all something, one thing. To show you how important it is. How many of you have ever been in class and the teacher says, okay, for one minute, I don't want anybody to say anything. Have you been able to do that? Yeah. Well, this is how important it is to the Jewish people. If you are in Israel tomorrow at noon, their time, you will hear a siren go off. And for one minute, everything stops. 11 million people totally stop. People get out of their cars. They turn off their radios. They turn off their TVs. They stand there in silence for one minute to show respect and to remember the 6 million people. That's how important it is. So, Well, maybe we can take that as um, an invitation that until we walk through these other doors tonight, why don't we see if we can do that as well and be silent? Unless you want to come and ask us questions. We'll move over there and that way you can ask Please. us questions. Please, yes, go on. Mm -hmm.